So when you inherit someone else's model, so you've taken over, you've perhaps started a new role or, uh, you know, somebody's moving on or you've, you've taken on new responsibilities. So you have been asked to take over and to use somebody else's model. So the problem here, of course, we know that models can be riddled with errors or mistakes or issues or misinterpretations. And how can you trust somebody else's model? So if you haven't been the person and to build that model, it's really difficult to trust that model and to actually use it. So your choices when inheriting the model is to start over and build your own model from the ground up, or you can validate and verify the existing model. So starting over to build your own model from scratch is, is really, quite frankly, inefficient and a waste of resources. So it's very rare that I would do that. Um, it's yeah, it's if it's if it's in really poor shape, um, it is far more efficient to use what you already have. But I would recommend that you do not leave any cell untouched as you go through the process of validation and and verification. So you uh, you just you want to make sure that when you inherit someone else's mistake or model that you are not inheriting their mistakes. So the best case scenario is if you are taking over someone else's work is that you have a handover meeting where you sit down with the person who built it and that person can take you through and explain all of the different various moving parts of the model. But unfortunately, it's uh, often not practical to do that kind of thing. So usually the original modeler is unavailable or they've moved on to something else and generally you're just thrown in the deep end and you have to figure it out for yourself. So um, a good modeler would have built the model in such a way that it can speak for itself as we talked about. So having assumptions that hopefully they've built assumptions documentation, there's labels, there's instructions that make it easy to navigate and figure out how to how to use the model of course any model that you build would have uh, would have all of those features but the model that you inherit may not include them so in the absence of any training or handover when you first start using someone else's model there's a couple of things that you should look for when you first open up the file. So when you are meeting a model for the first time so if uh, the model is if you are meeting this model, you open up the model that someone else has uh, has given you for the first time, take some time to get acquainted with the model. So if you are planning to make this model your own, you're going to be taking responsibility for its output. So you are going to be spending quite a bit of time together, you and this model. So familiarize yourself with the layout and how it's built. So you want to pay attention to the formatting, the formulas, the calculations, the external links, all of these things here. So you want to, uh, for example, get used to the formatting. Are you happy with the formatting that they've used? Um, the color scheme, you know, does it does it match the company or the, the type of color scheme that you've used? Um, does it does it match the company the company colors? So have a look at the formulas. So are the formulas consistent? As we talked about, there should be one block of data. Do they contain any hard coding? So we are going to have a look at a couple of ways of how to check those formulas. Uh, have a look at the workbook calculations. So generally, those calculations will happen automatically. So when something changes in the model, the formulas change as well. So sometimes though, when the file is really large and the model tries to control the changes manually, the calculation might have been set to manual instead of automatic. And I've spent many happy hours trying to audit a formula, wondering why on earth the numbers are not changing, only to discover that there was nothing wrong with the formula, just the uh, automatic calculation was simply turned off. You can also have a look at external links. You want to be absolutely sure what is linking to that file and get rid of it if it's often necessary. A lot of the time that it is uh, inadvertently done and also named ranges. So we talked about named ranges, having a look and making sure that um, all of those named ranges are necessary and that they do not contain external links because that can cause um, a few problems in the model. So you can manually go through in, uh, with each of these things, but I do recommend using the inspect document. So when you are meeting a model for the first time to go in and uh, 
you go into the uh, to the options to inspect the documents and that is going to really tell you uh, where where some of the issues might lie with that so let's have a look at how to do that so if we jump into Excel we go into file you'd go into info uh, check for issues and inspect document it's going to ask whether you'd like to save it uh, because you might want to remove it um, I'll say no and it's going to go through all of these options it's going to automatically tell you if there's pivot tables if there's macros uh, all of these different things that potentially uh, one of the things you really want to know probably is the hidden rows and columns are the hidden worksheets things that you might not necessarily think to look for uh, will you'll be able to find in inspect document okay so let's have a look now at some of the audit tools. So when you're inheriting or taking over someone else's model, so there's several factors that you need to come to grips with, the layout, the design, the formatting assumptions and formulas. And of these, uh, following the formula calculations is the most difficult. So we talked about uh, wanting to validate and verify somebody else's model so having to validate those formulas can be really really time consuming so uh, the fastest way to understand a formula when you see it for the first time is to go into edit mode so let's have a look at how to do that so you just go into the formula like that and double click or go to f2 that's probably the easiest way to audit or to, to figure out what uh, what's happening uh, in the formula so that's just using the edit mode there's also trace precedence and trace dependence so that is uh, also really really useful so going into formulas go to trace precedence uh, that will show you where the numbers are coming from double click double click go to there uh, control G enter to go back to where you were get rid of the arrows or similarly here it goes into uh, you can see exactly where uh, trace uh, dependence or trace precedence so that will show you where the formulas are coming from and where they're going to so that can be really a great way of really taking apart someone else's model understanding uh, what's going on and tracking down the errors if necessary so next is evaluate formula so to do that you would go in so let's say here you've got a really long complicated formula that you uh, want to take apart go to evaluate formula and you can kind of step in and step out of that personally I actually prefer to do that manually so make that a little bit bigger so you can see it um, if I go double click like that and then just highlight part of the formula that makes sense in its own right that is going to tell me exactly that my shortcuts not going to work um, while I'm recording but um, it will t actually give you uh, what the number looks like um, uh, what, what the actual number number is so that's a manual method of, um, of doing formula auditing so that is auditing part of the formula manually uh, and uh, going into the uh, the error checking tools the background error checking that's when those little green triangles appear in the corner so you can go into the options and um, and change the settings there so pay attention to those error checking tools uh, we might may find that useful uh, also show formulas so show formulas are a great way of um, of finding errors and um, tracking down problems so show formulas is just here on the formulas tab go to show formulas so you can toggle um, in and out like that or control and little tilde which is to the on most keyboards it's just to the left of your one on the top of your keyboard so control tilde like that you can back there that will kind of flush out if there's any hard-coded numbers in there uh, then there is the watch window camera tool that you might like as well if you want to use the watch window you just need to put it onto your quick access toolbar so you need to customize it to show it there and then you can just grab it like that and put it somewhere else so you can say that is my watch window that I want to look at what if I were to change my number of customers to something here and you could see how it changes so that's another another audit tool that you might like
Okay, so all of these different tools you can use to take apart someone else's model and check it for errors and make sure that you are not inheriting someone else's errors. So when we talk about auditing, uh, a financial model audit is very different to a model, uh, a, a, a financial audit, we call it a model review because it really just makes sure that, um, that the model is correct. It's not actually a, an audit as a, an accounting audit as we might be familiar with. Uh, one of the things that they'll do is, um, is to check your formulas. So if you are going to have your model, if you are going, if the bank is going to lend you lots of money based on the output of the financial model, what they are going to want to do is to have a formal financial model audit done on that financial model. So um, they are going to check your model to make sure that there are no errors in it. So that is quite an expensive undertaking, getting a financial model audit done. And a lot of the things that we've talked about, um, the best practice, a lot of the tools and techniques as you build the model is going to reduce the possibility for error. And it's really going to mean that the financial model audit, should you have to get it done, is going to be a much simpler and cheaper process for the company. So. Um, Yeah, a lot of the time we find that the models we inherit or the models that have been around for a long time have redundant assumptions. So assumptions that are not actually being used in the model and we're too scared to uh, to delete them because we think that it's uh, they might be needed. So uh, the way of dealing with that, of course, is to use your trace precedence and trace dependence and check whether those assumptions are actually being used in the model, save a version of it and then delete those and remove those uh, because that is going to make your model much, much easier to use if you don't have a whole lot of redundant, redundant assumptions in it. So sharing your work. So the financial model that you have spent a lot of time building this beautiful financial model, you want to take pride in your work and you want to own the entire model. So your instinct might be that you want to keep the model to yourself and not let anyone mess things up. This is, a, this is a bad idea. This approach does not work very well in a corporate environment. So modeling should be a collaborative and team effort. You should build your models in such a way that others can understand, edit and use and interpret those results. So we have really, the things that we've talked about today are, uh, are going to make you a good financial model, modeler, one who knows how to build a financial model that others can easily follow. As a model user, however, you don't always know where the model has come from and whether the model builder has built the model well. So a lot of the things that we've talked about are what things that you can do to try to make sure that the model is something that you can uh, that you can uh, that you can share with your team, something that you can work on together.